now Assemblymember Berry. <coughs> this is your lead-off question. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I've only got seven minutes and 11 seconds now, um, which is a bit harsh. I'm Housing Committee Chair, so I can't cover everything. But I just wanted to say, first of all, um, that there are some positive changes I can see between the two strategies, um, particularly welcoming the fact that you've set a target to identify 1,000 community-led housing homes. Um, to actually get some numbers on that is really, really good. And obviously, I've been pressing you for ages to push the government on rent controls. And there's a whole extra bullet point that you'll do that at some point in the future, which is really good, and I'll have further questions about that. Um, I wanted to clarify some things, though, um, starting with the definition of affordable, um, which I know we've discussed lots of times. Um, in terms of the government's definition of affordable in the final strategy, which is up to 80% of the market rent, the wording around avoiding this has been strengthened in your final version, um, although the policy wording appears much the same and it hasn't completely gone. Um, in the policy itself, um, section 4.1 part 3, I think, um, is still the same wording. The glossary now says you encourage rent significantly lower than 80% of the, lo the local market rent, which is really, really good. Section 4.25 says all intermediate rented homes should provide at least a 20% discount, which is obviously the 80% level, but then you say the mayor will expect larger discounts in most cases. So it's, this all sounds better than before. So can I check that what it means is you're going to try very hard not to allow any affordable rents that go up to 80% of market rates, but that you can't quite guarantee some won't get through and still be funded under your programmes? I mean, I'll let Jim answer the specific part of your question, but one of the problems we have is we're using government definitions. And you will know, we've experienced this during the campaign, uh, the public doesn't believe an affordable home is an affordable home when it's called an affordable rent because of the, uh, the, the almost oxymoron in relation to that. And so we've, the problem is we're using their definitions because there's their funding. That's why the glossary defines what their definition is. But I'll let James give you a, a specific answer in relation to your point about making sure we get a more genuinely affordable homes in London. Um, yeah, but as, as the Mayor said, and as, as we've discussed uh, before, Shana, at Housing Committee, uh, the stuff being in the glossary is just a reflection of the, the national terminology. And you know, we exist within a context where affordable rent is defined nationally in the way that, in the way that it is, um, and that a 20% discount is the nationally accepted definition of affordable housing. Um, as you rightly point out, though, um, for us, uh, we want to make sure that for uh, social rented housing or homes based on social uh, rent levels, uh, that's going to be our priority. So if there's going to be homes which would be delivered through technically the affordable rent program, uh, we will limit those rents at caps based on social rent levels. So although they might be technically delivered through the affordable rent program, they will be at our London affordable rent caps, which are based on social rent levels, which achieves uh, the outcome of delivering homes based on social rent levels, uh, even if funding is coming technically from the national affordable rent program. It's a way of using that money uh, to support homes at social rent levels. For intermediate housing, uh, it's a slightly different setup because it's going for people on intermediate incomes. Uh, but what we're also saying there um, is that in most parts of London, still 80% is going to be too much for people to afford. So we would expect to see deeper discounts in most places, uh, and we will pr we'll promote London living rent uh, as a way of making it genuinely affordable. Okay, and so how can we monitor this? Um, at the moment, you've got table two in the delivery area of the, of the um, strategy. Um, it doesn't actually divide affordable up at all. Everything's lumped under one heading of affordable. Can we see delivery targets for, for different levels and also see you know, any limit you might put on the amount of things that go up above genuinely affordable so that we can keep an eye on, on what's going on? Well, what we would expect, for instance, so in the, um, in the, the homes that we fund, uh, for instance, we uh, are starting to see a large number coming through at social rent levels um, at the moment. We expect that number to increase over the coming years as, uh, as our, our funding works its way through the system. You know, as you know, there's always going to be a pipeline, there's always going to be inheritance with what you get through the planning system and so on. But, but will you report on the rents that are being achieved through your funding in um, more detail so that we can, we can see what discounts you're getting? Um, we, we can report through, in terms of our funding, we can report uh, what rent levels, whether homes are being delivered for homes based on, afford on social rent levels, um, or whether it other other affordable rent levels. That, that information um, is available. Mm. Uh, we can report that. But we want to see the individual discounts that you're, that you're achieving, given the stronger wording. So 
Um, perhaps I should take that up separately. And yeah, I have two and a half want, minutes to go. Want, we can either write to you or have a <laughs> we'll meeting, sit down way. with you to show you what data is available and what uh, what the best way of reporting that might that be. That would be really good because I think we, your commitment is, is strong now, but we need to be able to check what you're doing about it. Um, I also want to ask about funding council homes. Um, the recent new announcement of um, 1.7, an extra 1.7 billion pounds from the government was accompanied by a promise to uh, make sure that 10,000 council homes get built, but that was from a range of different things. So the new funding, how, how many of the new, uh, how, many, how much of the new funding will go into council homes? How many new council homes can we expect from your funding? Because I know last time it was basically a third, a third, a third social living shared ownership. Are you expecting to see that increase? So this, this is a separate announcement I made recently uh, to support uh, 10,000 council home starts. These are council home uh, starts um, uh, up until 2022. And this is part of the four, four billion pounds funding we secured from the government. So the expectation would be for all of those 10,000 starts to be council home starts. But what proportion of your new funding is going to go into that? I think the number of counts, the number of extra homes you're going to be funding is 26,000. 10,000 if they're council homes, that's 38% oh, the the of that. Are you, are you going to try and, I mean, 38% of the extra money that you got going into council homes doesn't sound that much. I'm not bowled over by that, and I just wanted to know if that was the right figure. No, the, the global figure is £4 billion. Pounds. So, so, uh, so you, you announced um, £1.7 billion towards 26,000 extra seven, yeah. affordable homes, and you said 10,000 council homes. Yeah. So what percentage, of, what proportion of the 26,000 are going to be council homes in terms of your funding? <coughs> can, 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 if I can just come in here, because I, 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 th I think I understand the question you, you're, you're asking. Okay. If I can step back just a tiny bit, just to put it in context, because the, the 10,000 homes uh, the 10,000 council homes underway by 2022 includes uh, just council homes which people are building using our funding and it also includes right to buy replacement uh, homes which mm -hmm. we're using right to buy funding where it can be held through this right to buy ring fence offer which mm -hmm. basically means rather than councils being you know strung up and having to spend it in a very specific way we're going to effectively act as the custodian yeah. of that money so they can use it more flexibly to actually replace those homes for various complicated reasons those right to buy funded homes can't count against the 116,000 or indeed the 26,000 which is a component of that 116. So the numbers of 26,000, you asked a complicated question. Yeah, <laughs> 26, 000, I need some more time. The 26 and the 10,000 uh, don't overlap 100% because some of the 10,000 will be right to buy replacements which can't count towards the overall figure. Okay, I'll be sending you some written questions to get some more figures on yeah. how we can monitor your progress against all right. these Thank you very much. Promises.